My washing machine is running, Brusik. It is. Don't say it, Brusik. Don't say it. I don't have a microwave. No. Maybe once we reach a million YouTube subs, I'll have a microwave. But right now, no micro oave. I do have a stove. Kind of sick, eh? Loco is so wealthy, he has a full house microwave. My whole home is a microwave, is that what you're saying? True. Fuck, Rusek, we talked about this, come on, man. Okay. Oh, so many tiny fucking details. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. So many little fuck ups that I have to fix. There's a giant fuck up that I did over here, remember? On the pouch? Time to cover up my mistakes. More rope painting. So many fucking details, so many fucking mistakes. Yeah, there's a lot of details on this guy. I actually need to paint the side of the shield too. I just realized the side of the shield does not have any sort of metallic protection. Metallic protection is usually how we do it around these parts. That's the way to do it, Chet. It's the only way to be safe. But apparently the harbinger of decay likes to live dangerously. No protection. Well, just in the corners. I don't know how useful corner protection is. Well, better be safe than sorry, Rumble. What the hell? A sword's not gonna stop it otherwise. Or it's not gonna be stopped. What do you mean sword? It's a shield. The shield has little metal corners that serve as protection. Get your heads out of the gutter, Chet. What are you talking about? The metal bits are useful for damage, I guess? That's true. Can't believe you guys are making this sound like a sexual thing. Wow. All right. Oh, shit. Hey, what's going on, UK? Okay. Oh, more rope. Thought I was done with the rope. More rope! OK. 
Okay, um, there's a tiny little segment over here that I still need to use, or that I still need to base paint, but I think that's it as far as the ropes go. Which is nice, because I'm kind of done with the ropes. You're having a tranquil day. Ooh. Tranquil. That is a word we rarely see in the chat. Very nice. Twitch chat is always like, yo, Skibbity Ohio Sigma. You guys should use words like tranquil too. Actually, nobody ever says that. Please, please don't start saying that. For real, for real, no cap. No, 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 no. Stop, stop, stop. You're having a Skibby day? Mm. Trying to decide if that is also a bannable offense. Is it on fleek? I like how that is your example of a young hip word to use, Yugian. That's really good. I think fleek has already gone and it's 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 out. It's it's already gone. It's been out for several years too, I think. An underscore day? Mmm. I like that part. Underscore? Okay, 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 okay. We have a little part of the rope remaining and then we're done with the ropes. Just a tiny little section of rope here. You have no right to make your Turbo Nerd miniatures look better than my Turbo Nerd miniatures. Yo, don't you dare shit talk my plastic shoulders or, or soldiers, Hellion. That's even your real name. My plastic soldiers would beat the shit out of your plastic soldiers, okay? Let's go play with them. Sometimes when no one's watching and I'm playing with my plastic soldiers, I make the orcs kiss the necrons. Oh no, Imotech the Stormlord, what are you doing now? Yeah, yeah, yeah. They make sounds when they fight, absolutely. But they always make up. <laughs> yeah, that, no, okay, that might be, no, hold up. I don't actually play with my plastic soldiers, guys. Because I'm a man. And if there's one thing we need more in the world, it's toxic mas masculinity. So I'm trying to trying to do my part. They make the sound as the same sound as the dinosaurs you had when you were a kid? Bro, you had dinosaurs when you were a kid? Holy shit, you're old. That's incredible. What time is it? I think I'm gonna base coat the skulls and the skeletal parts. And then we are switching into some Frostpunk. That's the plan. It's a good plan. Um, I want to use a color I haven't used before, gamers. This is a brand new bottle of paint. Skeleton Bone. I figured this would be an appropriate name. Uh, I'm running... I'm not sure exactly what the name is, or what, what the difficulty name is, uh, Arcturus, but like the default difficulty. This one's nice, yeah? Do you have this one? Uh, 
Uh, I'm just going to do the little drippings as well. Hey, Helion, gifting a sub to Grünfeldbach. <laughs> Thank you very much. Welcome on Grünfeld. To my live stream. Of dieses Samstag. Tomb, ta or Tomb King Tan is what I'm using for the underside of the Deep Mare. Oh, quite cool. So this one is in the color range of the light neutrals. The actual color name is Light Olive Brown. There you go. I like that there's two names on these colors of paints. I think it's actually like such a good feature. It sounds silly. And I like the gamery names quite a bit, but it is kind of nice to also know that it's a light colored brown, you know? Comes in quite handy at times. It's actually brighter than I thought it was going to be, but I'm happy about that because it looks a little darker in the bottle. Maybe it'll dry up a bit darker, but I actually wanted it to be a bit lighter. These drippings are going to be Nurgle green. The drippings coming out of the skull. I guess we'll jam the brush in between. There's little areas over here that probably need some paint too. Wiggle, wiggle, wiggle. All right. Hey, thank you very much, Helion. Do appreciate the, gener uh, the generosity. <sighs> 12 minutes and you can log off from work? Wait, you're working while watching Twitch streams? Screenshot it. Blackmail material acquired, baby. We got him, Chet. GG. All right. I think I need to move the camera slightly higher up on the, on the stand. Because there's like a minimum range. No, it's actually okay. No, it's okay. I'm looking over my shoulder. It's a little difficult for me to see. Sometimes I wonder if the camera is just barely focusing on the wrong part or if my eyeballs are just betraying me. So these heads are actually a little funky because they have like... Bits of skin. So I'm fairly sure the way these heads work is there's like somebody that got chopped off or his head got chopped off and then his skin was just still there and it's slowly rotting away. Because it seems like these guys are attached to the, to the... Yeah, that's what it is. They're attached to the hook. But they still have like a little bit of head remaining. A little bit of forehead skin. Some foreskin, if you... No, no. No, 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 hold up. No. Forehead skin. A VR headset while painting? Could be kind of sick, Yugi, if the camera quality is good enough. Surgeons do that all the time. Yeah, very common procedure. Wait, surgeons chop people's heads off and then they hang them off their horse? I don't think that's as common as you think it is actually.
Um, the only problem is that on this head, it's quite difficult to see where the hair begins and the, the head ends. So I guess we'll have to make that decision ourselves. Like where is the skull and where, where, like where does the skin end and where does the skull start? I think I'm going to include the ear. And we'll go from there. We'll have to uh, paint in the skin area a little bit differently. Although it'll look nice when it's shaded anyways. Same for this skin right over here. Or this skull, rather, right over here. So this one goes all the way up in between here. This one has a lot more skin. Although he's missing some of the forehead skin. Also known as the... No, 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 no. There's this YouTube video out on my channel where I talk about the Thor skin. And it took me a while to realize that Thor skin sounds a bit weird. But one of the players was using a really cool Thor skin. Not proud of that one. Now I guess the ear obviously has to be part of the fleshy bit. We're gonna have to change colors on that. Yeah, I think actually the, the skulls are gonna have to be... So this is for the bone part. Um, I will probably have to re-go in after we do the skin color on the, as the base color over here too. With this same color here. What's up, Bein Sturk? I was looking at some guides for the Carnosaur Mini. Turns out it has enough alternate parts to make a second Mini submerged in the water base. With a little bit of sculpting. Nice. I saw there was like, um, there's like a video of somebody who turns one of the very big giant guys from Age of Sigmar. Like the King Broad guys, whatever they're called, I don't really know. But he turns one box into three box or into three minis. So like a singular sprue that is meant for one miniature gets turned into three of them, which I thought was kind of cool. But he had to do a lot of sculpting for that too. Yeah, that's like, oh god, that's not what we made the miniature for! I do keep all the extra bits though that are included for every mini. They'll probably come in handy at some point. I'm assuming everybody does that. I have a little box with extra bits. A bits box. Sadly, there's a little uh, section over here of something that I did not quite clean up properly with the razor, with a knife here. I'll just paint over it, but should have been tidier. When I built the miniature. That's the only part I've seen so far though. Everything else has been really tidy. I just forgot this one. Bit of a shame. What's going on, Narumpus? Nah, it's okay, dude. It's alright. We're gonna do some actual gaming gaming in a moment. I'm sorry that uh, more content is bothering you. No, I'm not planning on ever getting a 3D printer at this point. The amount of headache it adds, the amount of money it saves, I don't think it's... Nah. 
Not my jam. Plus, I don't think a lot of people realize how high quality these minis are. Like, if you want to print these yourself, it's actually, uh, it's not easy. Plus, it's straight up illegal in a lot of ways. Obviously, there are minis out there that can be printed. But stolen files that are then printed and painted, that's, that's, yeah, that's not cool. I don't like that part. Okay, I think that's another whole load of base codes done. It's slow going, but we're getting there. I need to do the metallics, and then there's one more color of brown, I guess, that I will have to use for the, um, the thing that the guy is sitting on. There's like a, a wooden beam over here. Plus obviously the weapons too. Like the weapons also need to be base coated. So we're gonna use a dark brown for that and then two different colors of metal. Dark brown for all the wood. We have to get a skin color type of thing too, I guess. Yeah. And actually there's a horn on his head. I forgot about the horn. Uh, let me just see real quick. Oh, I also need to do the hoofs of the horse. I forgot about the hoofs of the horse. Now that I have my gray still out, I may as well. What's up, slightly drunk? I'll actually just go with the, uh, the iron here too. We'll let the iron also be... Base coated in gray, should be fine. I think 3D printing is awesome for getting extra bits. Yeah, yeah, that, that I agree with, 100%. But I don't really wanna be in the 3D printing hobby right now. Maybe one day I'll reconsider that, but not really what I wanna do right now. Only so many hours in a day, man. Plus, like I said, I have a bit of a bits box. We can uh, we can take some parts from from that if I want to. You can also buy some extra parts, I guess. I don't know. I'm just not I'm I'm not really drawn to 3D printing, but I know some people love that sort of thing. I've never really thought about uh, doing 3D printing, no. I've never, like, I don't know. What's going on, Fear Dragon? 3D print guns? I can't, I can't have guns? I don't have freedom? Well, there are obviously uh, things you can purchase that give you the rights to 3D print your own stuff. But yeah, there are also people that will just straight up steal other people's work, right? And then I, I don't like that at all. You wouldn't download a car. Yeah, very true. God, that's gotta be one of the worst ads they ever put in a fucking movie theater. You wouldn't download a car. <laughs> I like to think that when they made that, they were thinking, yeah, no, nobody would actually do that, right?
Okay. You wouldn't download a Ferrari, Chet, and then 3D print your own. <laughs> um. Okay, the last thing I'm gonna still be base coating for today is the horn on the helmet. And that is gonna be it. You download food if you could. Rumpus out there, 3D printing steak. Psycho? Holy crap. Turned in one million channel points for a Twitch chat emoji. Huge, Psycho. Could you send me a DM on Discord with the emoji you're thinking of? Or if you have any ideas, I will reach out to art anime. Unless you have something else in mind, but thank you very much for watching for that long. That's an insane, insane amount of points. Very cool, thank you. It's been a little bit actually since we have had a new Twitch emote. That'll be fun. Okay, 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 okay. Low daddy? No, no, no. I do still have vetoing rights, guys. You do realize that, right? It's still my channel, right? Just because you got up to a million channel points doesn't mean you can just... It's not low daddy, it's low meal raw... Wait, low meal raw model? Mm. We should vote on if Loco gets to veto emojis. <laughs> Hold up. This isn't Frostpunk 2, guys. Am I gonna be scamming a loyal viewer? Whoa, whoa, whoa. Okay. Yeah. That is gonna be it for, for, for this for, for now. That mostly just leaves the chainmail, the Baltasar gold, I guess. The wood. So gold, wood, silver, and then a fleshy color. But I'm getting a little tired of painting all of these tiny little fucking details. So we'll, we'll leave that to next week. Plus I know there's gonna be a lot of little mess ups and little fuck ups anyway. So next time around, we're gonna use some Rhinox hide. I've got that over here. We're going to use a lead belcher. Actually, I'm thinking about going for a brighter color. I think I'm going to go for a brighter color. We're, we're going to age it. We're going to make it rusty. I think I'll go plate mail, Baltasar gold for some of the more brassy, bronzy colors. Rhinox height for all of the wood. And then flate one flesh for the skin. Yep. That's it. You guys get to live over here. We have all of the colors we need for next time around, but um, yeah, pretty happy with the progress here. Gonna have to do a lot of shading and a lot of progress on this still, but uh, I feel like I'm painting quite 
quite tidily. If I... There's one little touch-up that's been bothering me here for a sec. It's progressing, absolutely. It'll take a very big step forward um, when we uh, get to shading it. Dude, the little sight is in the way. I do not, Niall, no. I feel like this is the tidiest I've ever painted, which is kind of nice. Yeah, just taking my time, I guess. I'm not trying to rush myself. Go figure, that seems to help. What a crazy concept. For some reason, I sometimes feel this urgency to just paint faster. I don't know why. All right. <sighs> I've tried painting Terminator helmets, but your hands shake too much. Yeah, so what helps for me is really like try to lock in, right? So I try to keep my elbows on the desk. I like having like a little paint holder and then I try to keep my, my hands together as much as possible. So when you're painting, you're always having like an anchor. So I will try and have my pinky over here on the actual base and then my hands together. And this creates like, if you if you breathe in slowly or even hold your breath, that also kind of works. You can be quite stable, but you do have to be anchored in. Because if you like kind of float with your elbows off the desk and you try to like fucking, then it doesn't really work. You have to be very stable. It is definitely a little tricky though. I'm not, I'm not amazing at it, but I'm trying. Let me go ahead and switch microphones. Let me see. I've been really liking this mini so far. Yeah, it's been great. Here we go. Does that work? Can you still hear me? I think you can. Very nice. Alrighty, so I've been painting up the Harbinger of Decay. Lovely guy. Hello, Mr. Cameraman. Mr. Cameraman. Do you do your autofocus magic? Thank you. Um, sometimes the camera wants to really focus on everything else. But yeah, I have been putting in a lot of base coats on the horse and on the, on the, the, the rider and everything. So we're gonna continue doing more base coats today. I've already put the colors over here, the ones that I'm gonna need. And then we're gonna wash basically everything with a nice good old Agrax wash. I have a little clip on microphone that I've currently got on my shirt, Diaboli. Can I can I show you? Is this is I don't know if it's gonna work. There we go. It's uh it's one of these wireless mics. Which um, works quite well it seems. Yeah, I just clip it to my shirt and um, it sounds pretty good. Not quite as good as the main microphone, but I think it sounds good enough, right? Not a whole lot I can change about. Like, so the alternative would be having like a, like a, a, a hanging microphone in this setup or like maybe like a microphone above me or something, but I think this is probably the best solution. Mostly because I want to be able to move around my hands. How's my palette doing? Okay, palette is doing all right. The colors have separated a little bit over the weekend, but that's okay. That is all just fine. 
Um, so we got a lot of metallics that we need to paint today. There's also some wood that I still need to paint. But this should be a relatively smooth step, I think. We have a, yeah, a couple of small things here and there that we need to do. But overall, I think it should be relatively easy. What do we do first, guys? Metallics, wood, or skin. There's some skin as well, actually, just a very small amount. Um, I'm gonna do two different colors, I think, for the metal. I'll probably do the wood first. I think the wood is probably the easiest part to do first. I was thinking about doing a very dark brown. Although I'm wondering if this is the best color for it. Uh, I think it's probably fine. It says Rhinoxide. I haven't actually used my Rhinoxide all too much. So I'm not sure how good it is. But I know it's one of the easier colors to work with usually. So for the other browns on the miniature, I've used these two paints. And they are a little easier to work with, I believe, but should be okay. There's a lot of little bits and pieces that I really do want to try and base coat here. So the plan is to finish all the base coats on the, on the basic stuff today, including all the metallics, and then we're going to wash it, and now we're going to play some games. We're going to wash it with... Uh, with some Agrax. That is going to take a while to dry. So it should be perfect. What's going on, Ilenski? Thank you very much. How are you doing, dude? Welcome to the stream. May require multiple coats of this paint, but we'll see how it goes. I may also have to go back in with some of the previous colors and fix up my little mistakes. Because I have been... I've been painting pretty tightly, I think, but there are a couple of minor, minor mistakes. I'm trying to take my time on this mini, so I'm not really rushing anything out. Try to make sure to keep everything as tidy as I can. That's the current goal. Just keep everything as tidy as we can. Um, the plan after that, we're going to do some StarCraft 2. Going to do some StarCraft 2 casting. I've got a series between Classic and Bion that I wanted to go check out. And then after that, we'll do Frostpunk too. Gonna be here for like the next seven or so hours. A little bit more. Uh, I like using, oh, the brand name. Ah, there you go. I like using the Rosemary & Co. Series 33. I've tried a couple different brush brands, but these seem to be like the best um, price performance. Although I, I feel like it's a very personal personal thing though because I see a lot of different brush brands out there but I like I like these ones a lot these ones are relatively affordable like a lot of the Kolinsky sable brushes are upwards of like 20 sometimes even 25 bucks these are about 10 and I try to take good, good care of them right so I try to make sure that I wash them and I clean them properly every session And so far, they seem to last, which is kind of nice. These are also relatively easy to get a hold of, though. So I think that's very much so dependent on where you live. Because I believe in the US, this brand is very difficult to get a, get a hold of. I, I, I've seen some Reddit threads of people saying that they can't really get them. Because apparently you can't... The hair that these brushes are made of, apparently there's some very strict import laws. I'm not exactly sure. But it's a... Uh, they're manufactured in the UK, so they... You know, the Netherlands is pretty close. So I'm assuming that makes them a bit more affordable too. But there's a bunch of different brands out there though. Another, another brush brand that I've heard really good things about that are supposedly some of the best price performance is Da Vinci. I believe they're made in Germany. Um, I tried one of their brushes and I didn't love it, but they have a lot of different lines, so I'm not sure. But I can recommend these at least. These, these I do really like. So I have a um, Rosemary & Co size zero, double zero, and then a size two here. And then also a dry brush from them. 
that's what I've been using most of the time. And it's been kind of kind of nice. I've not been using these brushes since about, I think, March. I haven't changed them out. So these I have been painting with most days. Well, not, not all of them every day, right? But like maybe every other day for the average brush here. And... Oh, they still look pretty, like, uh, yeah, I don't know. I can kind of show you, I guess. They, they, they look... My camera's struggling with focus today. Like, what the fuck's up with that? Um, I think it's trying to hunt the... Uh... Maybe I should actually hunt my... Or hold my hand underneath. There we go. Like, this one still looks pretty much brand new. I don't think there's any... Uh... Noticeable mistakes on this. Which is kind of nice. What's going on, Mickey? How are you doing today, dude? Happy Monday. Do I keep the brushes you use in a case? Uh, there seems to be a lot of debate as to how you should store brushes. Some brands say you need to keep them upside down. Other brands say you need to store them horizontally. Then there's a lot of folks that just clean their brushes and just put them in, a, in like, I don't know, like a, a, a cup or whatever, and they just store them vertically like tip up. I usually just put them on my desk. <laughs> so I tend to have them horizontally, I guess, but I don't know. It seems like there's no real... I guess you should just do whatever the manufacturer says you should do, right? But in the end, the brushes are also like... Yes, these are high-end brushes, so they're kind of expensive, I guess, as far as brushes go. But they're also not like, you know irreplaceably expensive. But I do like to, I like to take good, good care of the stuff I have, I guess, if that makes any sense. Like I don't, I don't really want to be wasteful. I try to do that with most things though. Okay. That immediately makes the weapon look a lot nicer. But I feel like these brushes are gonna last me at least a year. Possibly more at this rate. And for 10 bucks, I think that's pretty good. I also don't do crazy shit with the brushes though. Like you see some people that are fucking dabbing and like they're, you know, they're going in kind of hard. I use these mostly for like the precise stuff, right? If I need something a little bit more aggressive, um, I'll use cheaper brushes. I have some synthetic brushes that I bought that are like a Euro a pop. Um, those can be beaten up a little bit, right? I don't know, man. There's a lot of different opinions out there as far as brushes go. You see people that are, for example, they will never use animal hair brushes for metallic paints, right? So they never use anything that's like high quality for metallic paints. Is my camera focusing, guys, or is it like... I think it's focused, right? I can't really see myself. I think it's good. Anyways. There are some people out there that use their, their nice, like they have like seven different gradations of brushes, right? And there's like a brush for this and a brush for that. It's whatever, man. Saturday was such a crazy stream, dude. We had so many subs in one hype train. I'm still a little, I, I was, I don't know. I was kind of blown away for the rest of the day. I noticed I was very tired after Saturday's stream. Ay, ay, ay. We had like 500 subs or some shit in like under half an hour, which hasn't happened on the stream in ages. Blew my mind. But yeah, thank you guys again. Glad to see that much love in, you know, after so many years of streaming, it's it's really kind. I 
was just looking at my total sub points right now. We're up to 1,572. We've been hovering around 1,000 for the last, I don't know, maybe four or five months or so. So to suddenly see it up 50% is kind of nuts. I think the most expensive brushes that they sell are from a brand called Artis Opus. I've never used those before, personally. I would like to give them a try at some point. But word on the, uh, the, the painting street has it that they're actually manufactured by Rosemary & Co. Uh, Rosemary & Co. So it may very well be almost the identical brush to this. Uh, but in miniature painting, a lot of people seem to like those. Uh, over the last couple of years. I would like to give them a shot at some point, but I, I haven't. Because they're like 20, 25 bucks or something for one brush, which, you know, has to be really good at that point, right? In order for it to be costing that much. But I do see a lot of folks using them.
How long has my microphone been off for? <laughs> what? Uh, I think my microphone was not charging, guys. Sorry, I'm back on the main microphone now. It's been off for a while. I've been talking this entire time to myself. Nice. Uh, 